Hello everyone, welcome to another session of Schneider Electric PSA training tutorials where you will learn Schneider Electric PSA programming. This video is one of the many series videos which we have been producing on Schneider Electric PLC. So if you are new here, there are other videos in the series you may be interested to go there before coming to this one. Now let's see what we shall cover in this presentation. In this presentation, we'll talk about the word logic operations. So word logic operations are just operations that are carried out on memory word. And they include the AND operation, the OR operation, the NOT operation, the XOR operation, also called the exclusive OR operation. We are going to begin with the AND operation. So what does the AND operation do? The AND operation actually performs bit by bit ANDing on a sequence of, of data in the two inputs and assign the results to the output. Here we have two inputs, so bit by bit ANDing is done to, to the two inputs. So these are the two inputs. So these two inputs are being AND together and the result is assigned to the output. This is a true table of AND operation. So the AND operation, the output is 1 if and only if both inputs are, are 1. Otherwise it is, it is 0. So 0 and 0 is 0. 0 and 1 is 0. 1 and 0 is 0. 1 and 1 is 1. Okay, so let's, let's look at some examples. So this is an example. When this AND block is activated, a bit by bit ANDing of these two inputs, these two operands, is being carried out, and the result is assigned to the output. So here we are ANDing hexadecimal 98 and hexadecimal E2, and the result is hexadecimal 80. So you can clearly see here that this is the binary equivalent of 98. And this is a binary equivalent of, of E2, okay, from your digital electronics class. So let's see what actually happens for us to have 80 hexadecimal. Alright, so 98 in binary is 10011001. And E2 in, in binary is 11100010. And now if we perform bit by bit ANDing 0 and 0 is 0, 0 and 1 is 0, 0 and 0 is 0, 1 and 0 is 0, 1 and 0 is 0, 0 and 1 is 0, 0 and 1 is 0, and 1 and 1 is 0. So at the end of the day, we have 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And in hexadecimal form, so we know that in hexadecimal form, we group them in groups of 4 bits. So we group the first 4 bits and as well as a letters for four bits together since it is an eight bit since an eight bit word that gives us zero 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 and the first four bits this is okay hexadecimal eight and this is hexadecimal zero so let me just demonstrate what I'm trying to say here so this is hexadecimal eight and this is hexadecimal zero okay now let's talk about the all operation what does the all operation do the all operation now performs bit by bit or in of the two inputs and assign the results to the output so how does the all operation works so the all operation with the all operation the output is one if and only if one of the inputs has a is at the one state if for example 0 or 0 is 0, 0 or 1 is 1, 1 or 0 is 0, and 1 or 1 is, is 1. This is an example. Okay, we are working on the same same operand. And after the OR operation, we have, so here when we have not yet activated the block, it is all 0. And when we activate the block, we now have 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. Okay, and that corresponds to hexadecimal F8. So what actually happens is that we have this string of data for input 1 and input 2 and then we do bit by bit oin of each of them your bits your corresponding bits so here we have 0 or 0 0 0 or 1 is 1 0 or 0 is 0 1 or 0 is 1 1 or 0 is 1 0 or 1 is 1 0 or 1 is 1 and then one or one is one and this corresponds to hexadecimal so if we group them in groups of four bits corresponds to hexadecimal f and this corresponds to hexadecimal okay. 
So this corresponds to hexadecimal A. Okay, so that's why you see the result. We have we have F A. Okay. Now we are just going to open our application. These are the two input data. Okay, like what we have hexadecimal 98 and hexadecimal E2. Okay, so you can see them here. And to see the output, you can just click on it, select it, and press F9 to, to inspect it. Okay, and it's going to print out the data. So now it is 00. zero. When this is activated, so let's say we send this to logic 1. So now the output becomes okay, hexadecimal 80. Okay, for the all operation, if we click the outputs, if we activate the inputs, okay, and then let's inspect it to see it in hex form. So I will just click on it and press F9. This is the data, so you can see it's FA. Now let's go back to the presentation. Okay, so that was it for the all and the an operation. Now we have the not operation. So the not operation is just the it's just the ones complements of the inputs, all right? So you just like changing the ones to zero and zeros to one. So you just complement the input. So if you have a zero, it becomes one. If you have a one, it becomes it becomes zero for the not operation. Okay, we have this data. It's a decimal ninety-eight. When that data is complemented, so that is all the ones are changed to zero. So zero, zero becomes one. Zero becomes one. Zero becomes one. Uh, 1 becomes 0, 1 becomes 0, 0, 0 becomes 1, 1, and 1 becomes 0. And the hexadecimal equivalent is 67. That's the hexadecimal equivalent, which is which, which equates to, to this in binary. So if we go back to, the, to, the, to our simulation to see that, if this logic becomes true, so if I activate this logic and I set it to, to the high state, you can now see... Okay, that it is now zero one one zero zero one one one. Okay, so you can inspect it and then so you can clearly see that it becomes what hexadecimal uh, sixty seven, just like what we have in the presentation. Okay, hexadecimal sixty seven. Okay, so now let's go to the next operation, which is the XOR operation or the exclusive OR operation. So this perform exclusive all in on two inputs and assign the result to the outputs. Okay, so how does the XO operation work? So the XO operation, the output is one if and only if the two inputs have different states. So you can tell you see when they have the same state, zero zero becomes zero, zero one becomes one, one zero becomes one, and one one becomes zero. So when the state becomes the same, the output is a zero, otherwise the output is a one. Okay, so let's see an example. So this is an example of an XOR operation where we have two operands, okay, hexadecimal 98 and hexadecimal E2. And when this B3 is activated, then the XOR operation is carried out and the result is assigned to the output. So in that case, the result becomes hexadecimal 7A, okay, which corresponds to this value in, in binary, all right? So how does that actually happen? Okay, so these are the two data. Okay, this is hexadecimal 98 in binary, and this is hexadecimal E2 in binary. All right, so you see that when the inputs have the same state, the output is 0. So 0, 0 is 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 0. And if you look at this figure, and then we group them in groups of four four bits then you will realize that this is binary seven in hex and this is binary 10 which corresponds to a in in hex which which, which equates to our to our outputs so let's see how that behaves in simulation so this is the x so this is the xor operation okay so i'll just go ahead and activate this switch to logic one, so activate it to one, and now you can clearly see that this is our output, which corresponds to exactly what we have, which is 7a. So I will just inspect the value by selecting the output and clicking F9. Okay, so it corresponds to hexadecimal 7a. Okay, so let's go back to the presentation. So I think that with this, we have come to the end of wet logic operations okay 
so let's see what we covered here so here we cover the an or not and the x or operation and in conclusion we can now say that anning is a bitwise operation where the output is true if both inputs are true and on is a bitwise operation where the output is true if any of or both inputs are true not is used to compute the ones complement of the input data and x on is a bitwise operation where the output is true if any one of the input is true okay so that is just one of them has to be true they don't have to be true at the same time okay so this brings us to the end of this this presentation and the next presentation we are going to look at the shift and the rotate logic operations so thank you for watching and please if you like this video subscribe share and give it a thumbs up and also if you would like to get more understanding on uh, psc development and psc training please drop it down in the description box below and i'm going to review it thanks once more and see you in the next video